So what's this idea of completing the square about? So we're going to use it to set ourselves up to use the square root property. And the nice thing about it is that it saves us a lot of trouble with factoring, especially when normally we would say we couldn't factor these. Normally I would say there aren't, anything, aren't any values that multiply to make 13 and add to negative 6. Completing the square gives us a chance to still solve this out. So, first thing we want to do is, if there's a coefficient on our x squared here, get rid of it by dividing both sides by that value. In this case, that's not a problem, so we're going to move on to the next step. So, next we're going to isolate the variable terms on one side of the equation. So, what this means here is this piece that's c, this piece that doesn't have a variable on it, we're going to move that to the other side. Because we need to be able to choose our c value for ourselves when we're completing the square. So now we're going to decide what we want that c value to be. And we're going to use this idea that c needs to be one half of b quantity squared. So I'm going to find out what that is first. c needs to be one half of negative 6 squared. Half of negative 6 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. So, something I've got to be careful of here. We're still doing algebra. So when I add 9 there, I need to add it to both sides. So negative 13 plus 9 puts me at negative 4. So now I'm ready to, um, what do you call it, I'm ready to factor this. And I'm going to show you something here. So when I went through and solved this, I said half of negative 6 was negative 3. This value is the one I'm going to use when I factor. On every single one of these problems, the factored version is always going to be x, something squared, or x plus or minus something, quantity squared. That something is always this value. It's never not that value. And that may not appear super useful on problems like this. You probably could have figured for yourself the factors of 9 that add to negative 6. But if you remember from yesterday, when we had fractions that we were dealing with, it still applies with the fractions. So it saves us a lot of trouble trying to figure out how on earth we're going to divide, or how on earth we're going to factor fractions. And so from here, we're going to go square root both sides. So I'm going to say we're living in the complex numbers for this problem, and we're going to end up with plus or minus 2i. Remembering to get that plus or minus on the step that we take the square root. It's not something that gets tacked on tacked on at the end. It always gets thrown on when we take the square root. So now I'm going to add my 3 over, and this 2i is not a like term with 3, so we don't combine them at all. It's just going to be 3 plus or minus 2i. And those are our two solutions. 3 plus 2i is one of the solutions, 3 minus 2i is the other. Okay, looking at our next one here. I need to divide both sides by 4. So if I divide my 4 over, I get that x squared plus 3x is 5 over 4. I'm fine with this fraction. doesn't matter to me. That's one of the nice things about completing the square. So I'm going to take and find my c by saying 1 half of 3, quantity squared. Well, 1 half of 3 is 3 over 2. 3 squared is 9. 2 squared is 4. So 9 over 4 is what I'm going to add to both sides. x squared plus 3x plus 9 over 4 equals 
5 over 4 plus 9 over 4. We'll simplify that on the next step. So in trying to figure out how on earth I would factor this, I don't have to spend a bunch of time trying to figure out factors of 9 over 4 that add to 3. I can just come over here. It's going to be that value. It's positive 3 over 2, so this factors to x plus 3 over 2 squared. Every time, that is going to be this value. And so on the right, I've got 14 over 4, which simplifies to 7 over 2. And we're ready for our square root property. So x plus 3 over 2 is equal to plus or minus, well, it's root 7 over 2, so let's leave that as it is now, and we'll simplify it at the end. So, actually, you know what? Let's change up how we write this. So I could have done that. That's perfectly fine. I'm going to leave this as an unsimplified fraction. I'm going to leave this as 14 over 4. Because this way, I can have it as the square root of 14 over the square root of 4, or 14 over 2. Just being a little creative to save myself some trouble. Now, I'm going to subtract my 3 over 2 over. And again, we don't have like terms, so my final solution here is x is negative 3 over 2 plus or minus root 14 over 2. Okay, last one. So if I'm going to get my um, variables isolated, I first need to have this in something resembling quadratic form. So let's get that distributed. And so now I'm going to add that on over. Let's add that y over. So minus y is 3. And so now I'm going to divide both sides. I could do step 2 before step 1 like I just did. Doesn't really matter. So I'm going to divide both sides by my a value, in this case by 2. So we have y squared minus 1 half y is 3 over 2. So to complete the square, c needs to be 1 half times negative one-half squared, or it needs to be negative one-fourth squared. Well, negative one-fourth squared is one-sixteenth, so I'm going to be adding one-sixteenth to both sides. Plus one-sixteenth plus 1 16th. Got to remember to get that on both sides. So looking to factor this, again, that's value, that value there is our key. y minus 1 fourth squared. Well, 3 halves, if we think about this as 16ths, should be 24 16ths. So we have 25 16ths. If you're seeing what I'm seeing, you're liking that fraction. So, square root both sides here, and I have y minus 1 fourth equals, well that's what's nice about this, a perfect square over a perfect square. So it equals plus or minus 5 over 4. Add my 1 fourth over, oops, not plus or minus, just adding that 1 fourth over, and that puts us in a really cool spot. So, so far I've presented my answer in this plus or minus form because I haven't had like terms. This time I do. I've got like terms here. So I can say 1 fourth plus 5 fourths is 6 fourths, or 3 halves, and 1 fourth minus 5 fourths is negative 4 fourths or negative 1. So I can get some nice concrete answers here, some nice rational numbers. Okay, that's it for completing the square. 
And we'll be on to 11.2, the quadratic formula, next.